divulging everything. Like all, all the secrets come out, every single one. And we're just like, hey, maybe we should stop. And my brain is like, no, we're gonna keep going with that. What is up, bestie? Today we are going to be talking about smut. But first, I am in dire need of some coffee. So let's go. We are actually getting ready to move into our new house next month. So we've been really trying to organize, clean up, and get rid of the things that we don't want to take with us on the next part of our journey. Just ignore our kitchen. It's a hot mess express right now. Yes, that is me absolutely drinking black coffee with two sugars. And yes, I have a soul, but I just prefer that when I'm at home drinking my coffee, it's just black coffee with sugar. And I also have to put water in it because that's on hashtag stimulation problems and I can't drink coffee if it's too hot. Oops, I made a mess. I hope you guys are ready for the team. I've been talking a lot about the power of books and the power of fiction books in particular, and also the power of smut for me. I honestly feel like fiction novels, fantasy novels, and smut have healed me more than any self-development book I've read in my life, especially when it comes to being comfortable with my sexuality, healing, you know, SA wounds. Reading Smut has given me back my power when it comes to being me and being, you know, intimate with my partner, owning that like sensual part of me. I am a massive advocate for reading and not just reading self-development or nonfiction, but that just burns you out. There's only so much you can listen to and do. You're gonna evolve no matter matter what as a human and we might as well add a little bit of spice a little bit of fun on that healing journey i'm not saying you shouldn't read self-development i'm just saying that i really burnt myself out when i was reading self-development i was in courses for self-development and i also teach self-development i got to this place where i was like god damn i don't want to be a better version of me today i just want to fucking be me have fun being me and that's when i really started reading more and i started focusing more on connection instead of like transactional fixes like oh gives me the cringe when I got back into reading, so I used to be an avid reader. I am like a very, very fast reader. Like it's scary. My husband's like, you would absolutely be like the most genius person on the earth if you could read encyclopedias or like statistic books as fast as I can read fiction because it's insane. When I went back to reading because it brought me joy, it was like two or three years ago. I ended up getting really sick. It was when COVID was crazy. I had a really bad cold. I could barely move. I bought the first book in the Crave series and I remember not being able to move from my couch at all. I devoured that book, devoured it. Like, oh, so good. It's about vampires. I'm a vampire girly, Team Damon forever. I devoured it so fast that my husband had to go to Barnes and Noble and pick up the next three books because I was like, I'm going to be sick for weeks. And like, this is so fun. It was so fun. It's so fun to read. When I first started reading again, I wasn't quite ready for like some seriously dark smut. I'm glad that I kind of started with Crave because Crave doesn't have a lot of spice. It's like very minimal spice, but the plot is so good. And the storyline is so good. And the world building is just amazing, incredible sucks you right in. The characters are amazing. Just in case you are restarting from not reading for fun at all and you need something that's a little bit less spicy or like dark romance because I am a dark romance girly so I want to recommend something for you guys that is like super light. I'm going to give you three recommendations that I have for you depending on which level you're at on your reading journey but I also have a freebie that you can download below and it's my favorite books over the last few years. Let's go get those three books. I know I said only three, but I did end up doing four. And I kind of feel like I should ask my partner what he thinks of these book recs because he's actually read like almost all of the books that I've read. I think I might go with what I'm thinking. Also, it looks like I'm glowing. Got this aura, baby. Thank you, boob light. If you are beginning your reading journey all over again, or maybe you've never really like read for fun, but you like fantasy, this is a book that I would recommend. It is Deal with the Elf King by Elise Kova. I love her books. I love her style of writing. I've read every single one of her books. This one was so good. I think I read this in a half a day. One of my favorites. I would read this over and over and over again. It's so good. The female main character in this book is so awesome. I love her so much. She's so powerful, so brave. Basically, it's about like a human falling in love with an elf king by happenstance. By happenstance. I don't know how to say that. They are kind of like enemies to lovers. I'm a mass 
massive enemies to lovers person i fucking love enemies to lovers and this book is so good it is not super super spicy so i had my niece read it and she was like 17 or 16 when she read it and she really loved it too so it is not too spicy i would say on the spice spectrum it's probably like a one level one spice even if maybe like half. Elise Koba is so good at the plot, the world building. Oh my god, I love her writing and it's so easy to read. I just read her newest that she came out with, which was like The Siren Duke. Loved that one. That one was a little more spicy and I was here for it. <laughs> That's for the person who is just kind of restarting their reading journey. This is the second recommendation and I'm gonna tell you when I tell you that this is my favorite book series to ever exist, I am not exaggerating. I can just feel my heart like beaming and I hope that it's translating in this video because this book series absolutely changed my whole life and I'm obsessed. I mean, obsessed. The Assassin's Blade, which is a part of the Throne of Glass series. That's the series up top, my favorite series of all time. It is by Sarah J. Moss. This, I'm speechless. The main character in this series, my favorite, female main character to exist in the entire book multiverse. I love her. I feel so seen by her story. I feel so connected to her. Definitely read this book series. This was Sarah J Maas's first book series that she ever wrote. She started writing it when she was 16. And to be honest with you, and don't hate me for this, I don't want to get backlash in the comments, but for me personally, out of Throne of Glass, the Akatar series, and Crescent City series, this is my favorite series. I will stand for this series every freaking day. There's a lot of like back and forth on what book to start with when you're reading the Throne of Glass series. I read this Assassin's Blade first and then I went to Throne of Glass. There's a lot of people that read Assassin's Blade like in the middle of the series. I do not recommend this. I absolutely adore this entire series. I love this book. This book like is a catalyst into that series and highly recommend. She's an assassin. She's a badass bitch and she's also healing at the same time and she's making a name for herself and she is like so intelligent. I loved this female main character because I was always guessing. Like Sarah J Maas did a really good job of writing this series because I didn't know what was going to happen. It was like so many twists and turns and if you're an avid reader, which I'm sure some of you are who are watching this, then you know once you start reading a lot of books, especially in the fantasy and romance, genre you can start to like smell the plot before you're even in the first chapter i can literally smell the plot of anything even if my husband and i are watching a movie i'm like okay this is exactly what they're gonna say this is what's gonna happen yes i'm that person with adhd who just while well, i'm watching shows or movies when you start reading a ton of books you can recognize patterns and you recognize the plot instantly with this series there was none of that this female main character kept coming up with surprises over and over and over again i love her I love this book series. Please read this. The level of spice in this series is very minimal depending on your perspective on the levels. Maybe 0.5 to 1. You have to read this book series and if you do, please come back to this video and comment below and tell me what you think because I just want to know. Like, are you a throne of glass girly or are you more in the Akatar realm? Which one do you prefer? Like, I would love to know and also would love to know if you read Throne of Glass and Aquatar and maybe even Crescent City, can you see the difference in her writing? Like, I feel like every single series that she writes, she's got like a different persona that she's writing from. This one, so different. Loved it. Loved that persona, Sarah. Keep writing with this persona. I love everything she writes, but this series just, it has my heart and soul. Like I said, you guys, if you are having so much fun with this video and you want to talk about books more, you can definitely check out the Valkyrie membership and community. We're going to have a monthly book club. It's super fun and super spicy and everybody is so sweet in that space. You will just love it. I don't know which one to do next. Oh, I'm going to save the best one for last. Maybe it's the best one. I don't know. Assassin's Blade might be the best one. The next one is going to throw y'all for a loop, especially if you are a fantasy girly, because this is not a fantasy book. And I normally am like a fantasy girly. I'm romance girly, dark romance girly, like Katie Robert. She's my girl. If you haven't read any of Katie Robert's books, come back for the part two of this video because we're going to talk about dark romance, baby. I normally do not read like rom-coms at all. I literally will walk into Barnes and Noble and if I see a rom-com, I'm just like, yeah, that's not for me. Like I'm dark and twisted. I need a little darkness in my books, which I'm just totally outing myself on this fucking video. I'm just sharing it all. I had my 30th birthday party last year 
and we did a book exchange, which was so fun. And one of my best friends brought this book and she left it and no one else took it. So at the end of the party, I brought it home with me and I was like, I don't know, this just does not look like my type of book. And I ended up reading it and I fucking loved it. This is your lesson. Don't judge a book by its cover. And also don't say that you're only into one genre because you never know. You might really find something that you enjoy in a different genre. Even this cover, like I would have never picked up this book. Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This book. God. This book. The male main character in this book reminds me a lot of the main male character in the Crave series. Just read this. Even if you're a fantasy or a dark romance girly, this story is so good. They start off as enemies to lovers. <laughs> you're gonna see a theme if you come back to my videos to check out more book content. Enemies to lovers is just my jam, but they start off as enemies to lovers and this story I just absolutely adore. It is so good and there's so much like plot. There's so much self-development in each one of the characters. They both have their own journey that they're moving through, but then they come together and connect in such a beautiful way. This is one of my favorite books of all time and it's so funny because I literally would never pick this up. The orange and the blue, which by the way, for all you business baddies out there, make sure that you're using orange and blue in your promos when you're launching an offer because the brain connects more buying with the colors orange and blue. I learned that from one of my besties in business. So if you're sharing an offer, use the color orange and blue. And if you're on my Instagram, you'll notice when I share offers in my world, I always use blue arrows or orange arrows or blue wording. Anyways, I'm getting off on a tangent, but if you are a business baddie, use the orange and blue. But I would never normally like pick this book up, honestly. It just looks so rom-com. Even the font, I need to learn better and start picking up these random books. One Summer, Two Rivals. Plot twist they didn't see coming. Nora Stevens' life is books. She reads them all and she is not that type of heroine. Not heroine, heroine? I don't know. Not the plucky one, not the laid back dream girl, and especially not the sweetheart. In fact, the only people Nora is a heroine for are for her clients, for whom she lands enormous deals as a cutthroat literary agent and her beloved little sister, Libby. Which is why she agrees to go to Sunshine Falls, North Carolina for the month of August when Libby begs her for a sister's trip away. With visions of a small town transformation for Nora, who she's convinced needs to become the heroine of her own story, but instead of picnics in the meadows or run-ins with a handsome country doctor or bulging four-armed bartender, Nora keeps mopping into Charlie Lestra, a bookish, brooding editor from back in the city. It would be a meet cute if not for the fact that they've met many times and it's never been cute. If Nora knows she's not an ideal heroine, Charlie knows he's nobody's hero. But as they are thrown together again and again in a series of coincidences no editor worth their salt would allow, what they discover might just unravel the carefully crafted stories they've written about themselves. Mm, so good. Yes, I'm a paid actor for this book. I'm just joking. No, none of these are sponsored or anything like that. I think you guys know that's obvious with my channel. I don't even know if I should say that. <laughs> Anyways, read this book, please. And let me know in the comments how you like it. One of my favorites. One of my favorite. The next one. The last one. I feel like I'm gonna get a little hate for this one. Just want to preface this with these are not my favorite of all time books, but these are the books that I recommend for the different levels that you're at. Oh yeah. And book lovers, I would say it's like a two or three spice level. Maybe two. Again, it depends on your perspective of spice, but I would say for a normal person, I don't even know what that means, but someone who is not me and doesn't have trauma, I just keep going. Like this is not a tell all rage. Anyways, for people who are new to spicy books, Books. This one does have a little bit of spice. A little bit of spicy spice. It's really good though. You know what's funny is that I'm like hella introverted, but as soon as a camera is in my face, I just go into this space of like divulging everything. Like all of the secrets come out. Every single one. And we're just like, hey, maybe we should stop. And my brain is like, no, we're gonna keep going with that. So we're just along for the ride. Last one. Like I said, I might get some hate for this, but this one is so good. This is a book I recommend for fantasy girlies. Anyone who has previous military, I served in the Air Force for four years. I don't know if you guys knew that, but now you do. I really loved this book because it's kind of connected to the military and it kind of, again, made me feel a little bit seen with the challenges that happen. Obviously, I'm not like trying to ride a dragon getting murdered off a parapet, but being in the military was challenging and presented different beasts. I just felt really seen while I was reading this book as well. This book is... 
The Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. And look, I have the spray painted edges. These are going on sale on eBay for like $170. That's insane. I just happened to walk by this in Barnes and Noble. I had no idea what this book was about. Nothing. I just saw this aesthetic. I'm like, I like dragons. That would look good on my bookshop. I'm going to buy it. And then I read it a couple months later and I was like, oh my God, I'm fucking obsessed. Okay, cool. So glad that my intuition told me to get this. Anyways, The Fourth Wing. You have to read this book. Especially if you liked Akotar or Throne of Glass or even Crescent City. This book is so fucking good. It's so good. I loved it. The new book is coming out in November. I cannot wait. The ending of this book, I will say, they leave you on a cliffhanger. So if you have anxiety, I would say wait until closer to November to read this because the ending will have you kind of like out of your mind a little in a good way. It's not a bad ending, but it's just a cliffhanger. And I have anxiety and OCD. So I was like, what? What? It's like the scene from Silver Linings Playbook when Bradley Cooper is up in his bedroom upstairs in the attic and he finishes a book and he's like, what the fuck? And then throws it out the window. It's kind of like that at the end, but like you're happy about it. It's weird. It's weird. Emotional damage. <laughs> I really, really recommend this book. On a serious note, highly suggest. This is one of my favorite books of all fucking time. I literally, again, devoured this book. I think it took me less than a day to read this. Obsessed. Probably gonna reread it before November because I love it that much. And Violet is such a baddie. The female main character is such a badass. She kind of reminds me of the female main character in Throne of Glass. I'm always here for a strong female main character. Of course, duh, on brand. A dragon without its rider is a tragedy. A rider without their dragon is dead. Oh, it gives me all the vibes again. Those are the four books that we have. Fourth Wing, Book Lovers, Assassin's Blade, and A Deal with the Elf King. I have freakishly long fingers, so I can hold all of those in one hand, which is pretty cool. Anyway, squirrel, read these books. Come back to this video and let me know in the comments what you think. If you've already read these, please let me know. I love talking about books. I could do it all day, every day. It is one of the most healing experiences that I've ever had in my life is just giving myself the permission to have fun without needing a specified outcome. When you read self-development, the specified outcome is bettering yourself and like learning more about yourself, which is fucking awesome awesome, but also it can be exhausting if that's all you're doing. What is better than doing something just because it brings you joy? That's so fucking powerful. Highly recommend. If you guys liked this video and you want me to give you more recommendations or go into some dark romance and my journey with reading books and how much it's healed me, let me know in the comments if you guys want to know more about that. And if you really like this video, I would love to come back and talk more about books because obviously you can tell I'm super passionate about it. If you'd like to be a part of the book club in the Valkyrie membership and community, check out the link below. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment on my YouTube channel. I am really trying to pour more energy, more intention, and show up here consistently in this digital diary of connection. Catch you next time. Maybe we'll talk about some dark smut if you're here for that. Okay, I'm being weird. I'm being weird. Uh, okay, bye. I don't want to go. I don't want to get off. This is so much fun. I feel like I need to like do YouTube videos every day, but I can't do that. I can't sustain that, but it would be fun. I hope you guys have the best day ever. Thanks for having coffee with me.